Well, well, raga, come state, ragazzi? Spero tutto bene. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about the Italian imperative mood, l'imperativo. The imperativo is used when we're talking about giving commands, orders, making an invitation in Italian. Verb moods deal with the attitude of the speaker, the manner in which we're using a verb. It doesn't deal with the tense. A verb tense deals with the time in which it takes place, the present, the past, the future. The imperative mood is about giving a command. So when I'm telling you, andiamo ragazzi, dai, andiamo, I'm using that to say, let's go guys, come on, let's go, dai, andiamo. So yeah, we're still conjugating the verb in the present tense, but we're not using it just to mean we go, as in we go to Italy. Instead, I'm saying, let's go, I'm giving a command. And that's what makes the difference. It's the attitude. So these are the kind of things we're going to be taking a look at together today. So when we conjugate things in the imperative mood, we have just a few pronouns that we deal with. We've got tu, noi, voi, and then the formal you, which is lei, written with a capital L. Now, there are only special rules for tu and lei, so we're going to be spending the most time on those because noi and voi are really easy. To conjugate anything in the imperative mood using noi and voi, just conjugate it as you normally would. When you're giving an affirmative command, meaning you're telling someone what to do, conjugate it in the present tense. For example, andiamo, let's go, andate, you guys. Go. If I'm giving you a negative command, just put non before the conjugation of those verbs. Non andiamo, let's not go. Non andate, don't go guys, don't go. Let's take a look at tu, because tu is a little different just for A-R-E verbs. When you're using E-R-E and I-R-E verbs, conjugate the verb as you normally would. If I'm telling you come here, that's venire. It's an I-R-E verb. I'll just say vieni qui. Vieni qui, come here and it's imperative mood. If I want to tell you, hey, read this article, leggi questo articolo, leggi questo articolo, and leggere is an ere verb. So those conjugations are normal with the two form. The difference is with the are verbs, but it's not complicated. All you have to do is conjugate the verb to end in the letter a. So let's take the verb mangiare. What is one of the first things I'm sure you learned in Italian, probably even prior to studying Italian, right? Mangia, mangia, right? Why do we say mangia when we're talking to tu? Well, because when we're giving a command and we're saying eat, we just put an A at the end of the verb. Mangia. For example, mangia questa pizza. Eat this pizza. Dai, mangia questa pizza. Come on, eat this pizza. So that's just the special rule with tu in the are verb group. Put an A at the end as its conjugation. Now, what happens with lei? Why was I saying lei was a little different? Basically, with lei, whether it's are, ere, or ire, you're going to use the congiuntivo presente conjugation of the verb. It's simply the rule. So if I'm saying mangiare, and I want to say, sir or ma'am, please eat this pizza, I'll say mangi questa pizza. Signore, mangi questa pizza. Sir, eat this pizza. Now, why is it mangi when we're saying lei, and why is it mangia when we're saying tu? Because the rule with tu was put an A at the end of the verb, mangia. That's the rule across the board for all are verbs using tu, in the imperative mood, of course. When using lei, we use the congiuntivo presente conjugation, which just so happens for lei to be mangi. It's just the rule. I have a video on the congiuntivo presente if you'd like to learn more about it or have a nice refresher. As always, that video will be linked down below in the description. Let me show you, though, another verb which might help make it a little bit easier. Let's look at andare. Andare means to go. When I tell you go or go there, I will say either va, because va with the apostrophe is one of the forms, but more commonly people will just say vai, like vai la, vai li, go there. When I'm being formal, however, what's the congiuntivo presente form of lei? It's vada for andare, vada. So if I want to say, oh ma'am, please go on ahead, signora, vada pure, signora, Vada pure. You can put pure at the end of any command to tell someone, please go on right ahead. It's very common in Italian to say, chiedimi pure, if you have a question. Chiedimi pure. Please ask away. Chiedimi pure. If I want to tell you informally, oh, please go on ahead, I'll say, vai pure. Vai pure. You can also just say chiedi pure. You don't have to say chiedi mi. Chiedi mi is a command using an object pronoun, and object pronouns can go on the end of the conjugated verb in the imperative mood. 
That's what's so exciting about it, and that's what we're also gonna cover today. So that's coming in just another minute or so. So that's the basic gist of how we conjugate affirmative statements for are, ere, and ire verbs using tu, noi, voi, and le. Now what happens with a negative command when we're telling someone not to do something? There's only a special rule for the tu form for are, ere, and ire verbs. That's it. All the other verbs, all the other conjugations rather, Conjugate the verb as you normally would. But when you're using tu, no matter what the verb group, take non and place it before the non-conjugated form of the verb, the infinitive form of the verb it's called. So if I wanna say, don't eat that pizza, as tu, don't eat that pizza, I'll say, non mangiare quella pizza. Non mangiare quella pizza, that means don't eat that pizza. If I wanna tell you, don't read that article, Non leggere quell'articolo. Non leggere quell'articolo. And if I want to say don't come here, I would say non venire qui. Non venire qui. Don't come here. So the rule for tu when giving a negative command, take non and place it before the non-conjugated form of the verb. We only do this for the tu category for are, ere, and ire verbs, all verb groups. So now, as promised, we're going to take a look at what happens when we use object pronouns in the imperative mood. Normally in Italian, we can never attach an object pronoun onto the end of a conjugated verb. We just don't do it. We can only do it if the verb is unconjugated. However, in the imperative mood, feel free, go for it. Remember when I said chiedimi pure? Chiedimi pure? Why do we say chiedimi? Well, because I'm saying you ask me also is what it literally means, but ask away is how we translate it. Chiedimi pure. Chiedimi pure. What if I'm talking to a group of people? Voi. I take chiedere, conjugated as chiedete, throw me at the end of it. Chiedete mi pure. Chiedete mi pure, ragazzi. Che problema c'è? Right? Ask away, guys. Ask me anything you want. What, what's the problem? There's no problem. Chiedetemi pure, ragazzi, che problema c'è? What about if I'm telling you, eat the pizza, right? First, I'll begin by saying, mangia la pizza. Dai, mangia la pizza. Go ahead, eat the pizza. Don't worry. Mangia la pizza. Non ti preoccupare. Now you see why we say non ti preoccupare for don't worry? It's a negative command. In the to form, we place non before the non-conjugated form of the verb. What about if I don't want to always say la pizza and I want to replace it with the object pronoun la? What can I do? You could take mangia, take la, put them together. Mangiala, mangiala, non ti preoccupare. Now, what happens instead if I'm saying let's eat the pizza, let's not worry about it? Hmm, how do we say that, right? Well, if we just remember all the rules that we covered today, it's going to look like this. So first, let's begin with mangiamo la pizza. Mangiamo la pizza. Okay. How do we then say let's eat it? La pizza becomes la mangiamola. Let's eat it, guys. Mangiamola. Mangiamola. How do I say let's not worry? Let's not worry. Well, if we say non ti preoccupare in the two form, and if in the noi form, when giving a negative command, we just conjugate the verb as we normally would, and we can throw the object pronoun at the end of the conjugation, what's it going to become? Non preoccupiamoci. Non preoccupiamoci, ragazzi. Mangiamola. Let's not worry about it, guys. Let's not worry ourselves about it. Let's eat it. Now, you can technically say that preoccuparsi is a reflexive verb for one to worry oneself about something, which is true. However, the reflexive pronouns and the object pronouns are very similar, and they also behave similarly in the imperative mood. So you just take this very same rule, and you can apply it for any other example, just like when I was saying, mangiala, mangiamola, mangiatela. It's all the same. And we're going to be ending this video on this last point about lay. Now, what happens with lay? Okay, so we already have established that we have to conjugate it in the congiuntivo presente form no matter what. So, for example, if I'm using the verb andare, it's going to become vada. So, signore, vada, sir, go. If I'm going to say, ma'am, come here, I'll say, signora, venga qui. Signora, venga qui. Yet again, always using the congiuntivo presente form of the verb. Now, what happens, though, when we have the object pronouns? The rule with lei is that the object pronouns or the reflexive pronouns, they never attach to the verb. So, for example, when we're taking chiedere, 
How do we conjugate it in the conjunctivo presente in the lei form? It becomes chieda, lei, chieda. And if I want to say, sir, ask away, please feel free to ask me. In the to form, we say chiedimi pure, right? But in the lei form, we have to say chieda, first of all, using the conjunctivo presente form, and we can't attach the object pronoun. It has to go in the front. Does this now make sense why in Italian we say mi scusi when being formal to say excuse me, and scusa when we're being informal? Now see how it works? Scusa, it's a verb that ends in are. So two conjugations end in a. Tu, scusa, you, excuse me, scusa. Then when we're being formal, we use the conjunctivo presente form. Scusi. So, mi scusi, mi scusi signore, mi scusi signora, excuse me sir, excuse me ma'am. Or how about when you go into a store and someone says, mi dica. Why do they say mi dica? Because they're basically saying, dimmi, like tell me, what, what would you like, what do you want? Dimmi is the informal version. The formal version is what? Mi dica. Mi dica. Look how cool that is, guys. So I hope I uncovered some things that you've come across in Italian before and now was able to help you finally make sense of them. Thanks so much, like always, for tuning in and checking out this video. If you're interested in joining me for my weekly group lessons, please feel free to send me an email and also take a look at the link down below in the description. My email address is listed on that page. I'd be happy to have you in class. So that's going to be it from me today, guys. Please let me know down below in the comments section if you have any questions. Be sure to also check out our other video in which we spoke about the imperative mood because we did cover some other things that I didn't cover very much in today's video because we went into some other stuff. But I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. Be sure to rewatch this video a couple times because these sort of fine little points in grammar take some time to settle in. So it's going to take you some time, some repetition. La repetizione fa la perfezione. Repetition makes perfect. Always remember to spread the love, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Ciao ragazzi, alla prossima, ciao!